everybody, welcome back. 2022 in the house. Yes, we made it. Welcome back. Glad you're here. First review of the year, January 1st, X-Tech MM35. For your cheapo pleasure. X-Tech has been around forever, literally in the multimeter industry, in the uh, instrument testing industry. Today we're looking at a cheapo. Yes, X-Tech and cheapo. Who would have thought, huh? The MM35 cheapo non-auto ranging multimeter. Today in the cheapo realm. First things first, it does not ship in a box. Don't get this plastic little bubble wrap. Hey, that's okay. No worries about it. Um, tells us basically what the meter is. Two incarnations in the MN30 series. As you can see here, we have the MN35 and the 36. Now the 36 is auto ranging. Could not get one in time for this review though. So we are stuck with the little manual ranging MN35. Now this was cheap, like I paid about $39, $40 Canadian from Amazon shipped direct. So yeah, that is a really good price for an X-Tech. And look at this, X-Tech even says they're throwing in a free temperature probe, $13 value. 13 bucks for this? Ah. Anywho, crazy marketing aside, yeah, it's nice that they give you a temperature probe. Uh, yeah. What else do you get? Well, you get your test probes. These are standard test probes, nothing fancy schmancy going on here. Um, they don't have the X-Tech branding either, so uh, no X-Tech branding on the test leads. Rated for a maximum 10 amps, 1000 volts, CAT2. So, you know, sort of run-of-the-mill kind of stuff, but uh, definitely fine for your everyday home use. We have that trademark X-Tech orange and green, and you know, I, I like it, I really do. This is one of my favorite color combinations in multimeters. Don't ask me why, but I really like this. Maybe it's old school or just, you know, I don't know, but for me, it works. It works really well. It looks like a multimeter that means business. I love the color. You have that rubberized boot that does come off as well. Easy breezy, just give a little plick and away Looking you go. a little naked, aren't we, Mr. X-Tech? Yeah, without that orange boot, wow. But there we are, that tilt stand is built into the meter, not just into the rubber boot, which you see sometimes uh, much preferred. Has a funky angle, doesn't it? But you know, it does work and you can definitely one hand it, not on this slippery surface here, but definitely on a typical workbench or work surface, you shouldn't have any problem. And look at that, UL rated. Uh, 61010, 10, I believe, is the uh, UL rating that it's confirming to. It's your basic one. Uh, nothing, you know, too crazy. But uh, hey, third-party certification is always Overall a bonus. fit and finish. I really like nice and clean, good quality plastics, a decent rubberized boot. Uh, the only thing I'm not a fan of is if you look at those input jacks. Come on, X-Tech. Yeah, that is a safety faux pas. Our positive should be red. Uh, the common should be black. You know, this is the current should be red. This is like 101 basics. It disappoints me that X-Tech can't do the basics here. Uh, take a look at the rotary selector switch starting at the midnight or off position. Followed by volts AC up to 600 volts. Low current milliamps up to 200. High current amps DC up to 10 amps. 1.5 and 9 volt battery test. Temperature mode in both Celsius and Fahrenheit. Continuity and diode. Resistance up to 20 mega ohm. Finally, DC volts up to 600 volts. Not much volts. thrill seeking going on here. We have a basic one touch hold. That's it, that's all. No other functionality, uh, nada. Bottom of the multimeter, we have our high current input on the far left. In the middle, we have our common or ground. And finally, on the far right, we have our temperature, resistance, and volts. Also, we're getting a warning here. 600 volts max, 200 milliamps max, CAT2 600 volts. And look at that, unfused in the high current mode. Unfused. Ah. When you turn it on for the first time, boom, look at that big, bright, bold LCD display. No backlight on this meter, unfortunately. 2,000 counts is all we get, so it's pretty ho-hum in terms of specs. But that being said, I gotta say, you know, it's a pretty crisp, clear display. It is susceptible to a bit of glare, a lot of glare going on with studio lighting here. But besides that, I think it's a pretty sweet looking LCD display. Clean and, uh, you know, just the right size. I did review this little MN30 X-Tech way back when, and uh, what a difference in displays. Look at that, hey? None of them have backlights. This one does have a flashlight, but still, I mean, bang for buck, I'll definitely take the MN35 here in terms of overall visual quality. Yeah. By the way, those leads are in there nice and tight. No worries there. They're not uh, hanging on. Uh, they're on like glue, like glue. Love it. Love it. Also, that selector switch, listen to that, clickety-click, clackety-clack, 
Oh, Hitzel's range is with authority. And uh, yeah, it's a really sweet selector. Love Here it. we are, first DC Precision Voltage Test of 2022. Wow, 2022. It's got a nice ring to it, doesn't it? 5.01 volts, had the uh, precision voltage standard heating up for about 15 minutes. 5.01, hey, that is definitely in spec. Almost forgot, by the way, speaking of specs, it does come with our little pullout user's manual and we have the specifications right there. So we're looking at plus minus 0.5% reading plus two digits up to 600 volts DC on the AC side, plus or minus 1.2 volts and 10 digits. So it loses some of that accuracy in the AC mode. By the way, these manuals are, or pullouts, are, they're hidden inside the cardboard. So if you're not careful, you can actually throw the box and lose the manual. So yeah, just take note. By the way, X-Tech gives you a one year warranty uh, within North America, at least on any X-Tech model. And from what I hear, it's pretty well uh, a decent warranty. They honor it. So if you have any issues at all with your X-Tech multimeter within the first 12 months, X-Tech has you covered. And that is sometimes bonus. Quick height current test right now, sitting at just under one amp, 0.92 amps and let's take it up a notch 3.70 amps according to the Kiwi's power supply 3.67 coming on the x-tech already let's take it up up and away to just under 10 amps and 9.85 coming up on the x-tech 9.93 on the Kiwi's and look at that no high current alarm no indication that you were definitely in the danger zone uh, yeah but it is handling that high current without an issue let's bring it back down 4.2 amps and just bring it up one more time yeah so no worries here too bad we don't have that audible alarm but uh, is what it is 0.99 for the client tools 1.0 for the x-tech and 0.99 for mr habit test already up up and away we're going to take it up to seven volts even Look at that, 7.00 for the Pine, 7.01 for the X-Tech, 6.99 for Mr. Habo. Already up and away, 20 volts is what we want. 20.01 volts according to the power supply. And, and because we are in manual ranging meter, we have to do a slight adjustment, bring it up to 200 volts to get us over and above. Okay. 20.01 for the power supply, 20.01 again for Mr. Klein. This is without a doubt the most accurate multimeter I have seen in the past couple of years. Amazing. 20.0 for the X-Tech and 19.998 for Mr. Habitest. All right, we are gonna max things out now. Maxing it out, 32.01 volts. 32.02 for the Klein, 32.1 for the X-Tech, and 31.97. Now, of course, you don't have the same resolution on the little 2000 count X-Tech. Considering he's going up against a couple of pretty big name meters here, that little X-Tech MN35. Okay, okay, you can see we are now in diode mode, diode slash continuity, starting off with our LED and diode test. Let's start off with the standard diode. There's the forward voltage drop. 0.550 volts. We don't have that nice audible beep, however, but it is good to go. Starting off with the red LED, it is lit. The forward voltage drop over to the yellow. Yes, the same. Green, not an issue. The blue, all are lit. But uh, yeah, that forward voltage drop is only on the yellow and the red. Just under three volts, 2.94 volts, maximum output voltage in diode mode. Alrighty, continuity mode is next. I love continuity. According to the manual, anything less than 40 ohms gets us to continuity. Here we go, three, two, one, stock probes. Oh, scratchy, scratchy. Not very loud. Oh, wow, but it, it's fast though, but it's pretty scratchy. Okay, already let's try the probe masters. Probe masters it is. Boy, these things look honking huge on this tiny meter. Three, two, one. Look at that, look at that, people. What a difference a good set of probes makes. Wow, it is no longer scratchy, it is lashed, it is loud, and it is pretty darn good. Thank you, Probe Master. Sixty-seven point eight decibels, maximum output volume in continuity. Here we are in temperature mode with that awesome thermal couple. Thank you, X-Tech, for including that $13 temp probe in with the meter. 
I'm being sarcastic. All right, 62 degrees Fahrenheit for the Klein tool, 68 for the X-Tech. Um, let's switch it over to Celsius. And 16.9 for the Klein, 20 for the X-Tech. And I just bring in a third party opinion here. We've got 16 for the Anning. So yeah, I think, I think suffice to say, Mr. Klein is more uh, on the straight and narrow. So X-Tech, thank you for including that thermocouple, but it's just not that accurate. Finally, take a quick look at resistance. Let's start off with an 8.25 ohm, 1% precision resistor. See how accurate it is. And let's actually switch it to the low ohms mode. Make, make it more interesting. 8.25 ohm is what we want. 8.2 on the 2000 count display coming up now. 8.3, 8.2. So in between. So hey, not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, let's try the range speed. Sitting at 1 mega ohm right now. 1 mega ohm it is. 3 mega ohm. 6 mega ohm. A little slow to range. 10 mega ohm. Yeah, so once again, it is suffering from some slowness. Let's try 100k. 110k, 111k, 111.1k. Well, not too bad. Faster, definitely on the lower resistance ranges. All in all, I've got to say thus far for a cheapo $39 Canadian, about 33 bucks US, has performed quite admirably. Uh, let's take a look on the inside. So to access that battery housing, you have to unscrew those two Phillips screws right in the middle. So that is definitely um, a pain in the butt if you have to change your battery and you don't have a screwdriver on you. Anyway, once you do that, uh, bada boom, bada bing, bada bang, you're in powered by one nine volt battery. Hmm. So as it mentioned, we do not have a high current fuse, simply a high current shunt with a nice dab of solder on it over here. Those input jacks, they seem to be okay. Um, 250 milliamp glass fuse rated at 250 volts. Okay. Oh my god, I didn't even notice that. We have shielding on the opposite side of the multimeter. A little bit of shielding. Woo! Whoa! Yes! So, X-Tech, uh, hey man, I am happy to see this. Wow! Good stuff, X-Tech. Okay, I'm still shaking after looking at that shielding. Wow, I can't get over that. Um, here we have a grounding spring. This is our piezo. Uh, that's what gives us that continuity. Wow, what a difference it made with those ProMasters, eh? Something else. Very plain Jane uh, here in terms of the overall look and feel. No, not much going on at all on this side of the board. I don't see any PTCs or mobs or nothing as well in terms of input protection. Uh, let's take a look on the other side. Holy smoke, in December 31st, 21st rather, 2004. And I just bought this in 2021, the end of 21. Wow, this thing is like 17-year-old PCB. <sighs> Good God. Okay, that explains the shielding. Here we are on the other side of the board, and wow, things definitely get a little more interesting here. Look at all those, look at all those components, those resistors. Wow, all through hole. Yeah, some old tech going on here, that's for sure. Um, hence the date of the PCB itself. We have a, a trim pot over here. I believe that is for the voltage. An OPAP LM358 over here. Uh, and one PTC as well, one lonely PTC down at the bottom. Got to say though, those input jacks in there, nice and solid. I like that. Good old school quality going on. And the tracks themselves, they don't appear to be greased. I'll probably throw some dielectric on there before I close it up. But overall, not too shabby. And on the other side here, we have the main selector switch itself. There's our pads, one, two, three, four, five, six, and our balls. And look at that, we have one, two, three, four balls on this meter. This meter's got four balls. Holy moly cannoli. So, uh, wow, yeah. Anyway, um, I gotta say, all in all, for the cheaple round, I guess grab one while you can. I don't think these will be in stock forever. And uh, I don't know if they're coming up with a revision anytime soon. Here we are with the elastomar strip at the top for the main display. That's what touches and interfaces with the circuit here, giving us that awesome 2000 count resolution. Yeah, well, not really awesome, but it's it's nice. All right, gonna put it back together, come back with my closing count. Closing counts, closing thoughts. Oh. Once again, I just wanna take a quick look at that uh, quality soldering going on here. I know there's lots of uh, not so great um, experiences in the past with some X-Tech stuff, but I gotta say, this one at least really hits the department in terms of quality. So really nice soldering, good stuff. Closing thoughts on the X-Tech Mini Multimeter, the MN35. All in all, I like it, I like it. 
First of all, build quality is really, really good. Yeah, not much going on there in the input protection department, but aside from that, there is some really good quality in there. Good quality soldering, uh, nice attention to detail component-wise, and yes, I know it is a dated PCB, but wow, four balls on that selector switch, four balls! Actually-wise, it took its time and it did a good job. Uh, resistance a little bit slow, and the voltage range, hey, it kept up with Mr. Klein, and that is definitely something to brag about. No, it doesn't have a whole lot of bells and whistles, but don't have any of that good stuff like NCV, live wire, yada, yada, yada. It's just your basic manual ranging multimeter, but being basic isn't a bad thing. And in this case, it does a great job. The XTEC MN35 Mini Multimeter gets a solid four out of five stars. Hey, thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing.